been on this beautiful fall day. So good to see everybody. Join me with me in prayer. Lord, thank you so much for this day. Thank you, Lord, so much for this opportunity to be here. Thank you for planting the desire in each of our hearts to be here. And, Lord, thank you ahead of time for the message we know that you're going to deliver to us. Lord, there are needs out here, so many needs, and yet you know each one and you care about each one. And I just pray that, that, that we will open our hearts to you and that we will receive all that you have to give us this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Are you ready for a happy day in the Lord? Jesus is alive. The empty cross, the empty grave, life eternal, you have won the day. Shout it out, Jesus is alive. Free at last, meeting face to face. I am yours, Jesus, you are mine. The endless joy and perfect peace. Earthly pain finally will cease. Celebrate, Jesus is alive. We believe.
um, if you um, volunteered to do a Thanksgiving basket, I need those today. If you brought it this morning, thank you. If you don't have your name in your basket, I noticed there was one back there. I don't know who it came from, so if you could please go write your name on the box or put your name in it, I would appreciate it. If you did not bring it this morning, I need it here by 4 o'clock, if you can please do that. I also need four more baskets. We are short on um, baskets. We've got more names than baskets this year. So if you are willing to do a basket, come see me after church. If you don't have time to go grocery shop, if you just want to give me money, then I will go do the basket. But either way, we need four more baskets this morning. So if it's on your heart today, please come see me right after church. Also tonight, Miss Nona, we'll be delivering the Thanksgiving baskets tonight. So those of you who will volunteer to help us deliver will be in the back. But we also need to go take down the Christmas decorations, those that will go help us. The youth has already taken down the bus barn. All we have to do is get the ones that are upstairs and bring them down for Miss Nona. So those of you who will help us do that, it won't take long. There's not as much up there. The youth has done the hard part. They got all the trees down. Um, but if y'all could please help us quickly go down there because we got two big things to do tonight, I would appreciate it. Let us pray. Heavenly Father God, we thank you for today. We thank you for the time you've allowed us to be here. We pray, God, that you've been blessed by our worship and that you are continued to be blessed by it. We ask, God, that you bless this time of the service where people give back to you. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs>
Great. Gracious Heavenly Father, we're just so thankful for the many blessings you give to us, God. You require so little of us, God. I just ask that you take, receive, and multiply these offerings, God, and bless the giver as they've purposed in their heart, God. For it's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen.
Father, we have gathered together in that powerful name of Jesus. That we might worship you, O God, that we might lift you up. Father, strengthen our hearts and lives this day. Let your goodness be in this house. Father, there be a need, God, I pray for the healing and saving grace of Jesus Christ to reach down and to make them whole. And Father, we bless you right now. Father, we are so thankful for all these that have come out into your house that we might lift up, praise, magnify, and glorify the wonderful and holy name of our God in the name of Jesus. Father, we bless you now. And Father, we lift you up and ask you, O oh God, to give us of your strength, anointing, and blessing that we might worship you in Jesus' loving name. Amen. Amen, brother. We're a blessed church to have such musicians. And I thank God for it. Amen. I was listening to the songs that uh, my sister chose this morning. And I couldn't have gone through there and picked out better. I, I appreciate the last song that we sang. And Gracie does a beautiful job. Amen. Amen. As the rest, we appreciate the goodness of God. The only person I've heard sing that besides her is uh, Brooke. And if you can say her last name, I'll be appreciative. But uh, it's one of those. And... Uh, but I just, I just, when I preach, you're going to say, well, my Lord, did y'all get together and pick the songs out? No, but the Lord did. Amen. Amen. But it is good to be here. It's good to see our pastor able to get out. I'm telling you, he's just moving that head around a little bit and a little bit. Yes, amen. <laughs> amen. He's getting better and better and gooder and gooder. Amen. And we appreciate that, and we appreciate the blessing of the Lord. And I tell you, my girl finally showed up. Well, both of them did and brought those beautiful youngins out. <laughs> Amen. But we appreciate y'all for being here this morning. And my daughter is in the house. Amen. <laughs> and I'm glad to see her and all the rest of you. And... Um, some are sick in body and not able to be here today, and we want to uh, ask prayer on their behalf. But I'd like to thank the church for praying, and I believe that you've been praying. Sister, it's good to have you. She'll be here through Thanksgiving, um, and then she's headed out. But it's always good to see her and all of you when you make it out into the house. But Br Sister Blunt. I told her a while ago when I, when I saw her, I said, I'm going to tell you something. You look 100% better than you did. 
And I thank God. I thank God. And we're just so glad that she's able to be out with us today. And we just thank the Lord for all of his blessing, for his touch. There are, there are several of you here today that had it not been for the touch of God, you would not be able to be here today. But I thank God for every one of you. Don't, don't feel bad if I don't recognize you because anything past somewhere right along in here is a blur. But anyhow, we do appreciate the goodness of God for every one of you. If you have your Bibles, I'd like for you to turn with me to Matthew, the 8th chapter. And uh, I told me I may read a few verses, then after that, you're on your own. But uh, Matthew, the 8th chapter, we're going to begin with the 18th verse. And... Uh, It is so good to know that God has given us promises. And as we know that his promises are yes and amen. If God said it, it's a done deal. I marvel sometimes at all of us, especially me, that we come up and we wonder about things and we cry about things and we complain about things when if we just look in the word of God we realize God has already said all we have to do is believe in these scriptures that I'm going to be talking about for just a few minutes and then I'll get down into the rest of the sermon but I, I thought of this and I said this is a great example of what I want to be speaking about today I'm going to be speaking on living the promise of God. The Bible said that he daily loadeth us with benefits. He's promised. He has already given. And not only has he given or promised something, but he's backed it up with the blood of Jesus Christ, his only begotten son. And it's through that power that we have deliverance. In the 18th verse, the Bible says, Now when Jesus saw great multitudes about him, he gave commandment to depart unto the other side. And I know that we've talked about these things. You've probably heard this stuff preached on a thousand times. And that's okay. Just hang on. One thousand one. But a certain scribe came unto him and unto him, Master, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. And Jesus said unto him, The foxes have holes, and the birds of the air have nests. But the Son of Man hath nowhere to lay his head. We make a lot of big, boisterous claims or promises and so forth. But when it comes down to it, it's according to whether or not we're going to live it or not. And then another of his disciples said unto him, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. But Jesus said unto him, follow me and let the dead bury their dead. And then when we hear the next words, and I... I Understand, Jesus has been saying, follow me. Follow me. Wherever I go, you go. Whatever I do, you be a part of it. Whatever it is. And in our life, when we read into the Word of God and we see the direction that God has given for our life, we're following Christ if we obey that. But if we want to hold back and let me figure this out, I need to see how much money I have in the bank I need to know if there's any gas in the car, which I do not have any in mind this morning. I've got to run to the gas station and hope I don't have to run on foot. <laughs> Let me check and see what everything is. Let me see how everything works and how it goes. Well, no. Jesus just commanded, follow me. Simple. Simple. Isn't that simple? Oh, yeah. 
Jesus said, follow me. And behold, there arose a great temple, tempest. Now, the Bible said that he went into the boat. The disciples followed him into the boat. And we do that a lot of times. We are going to obey God. I don't care what comes. I'm going to obey God. We're like that first one over there. Wherever you go, I'll follow you. Don't you worry about it. Let me just go take care of some business first, and then we'll see about all this later. No, it doesn't work like that. When Jesus says, follow me, that means drop whatever you have. If you look at the disciples when they were fishing, what did the Bible say they did? They dropped their nets. They quit everything that was going on out here because these things ended. And now it was time to serve God. You take that kind of an attitude with God, things are going to happen not only in your life or your family's life, but in every life that you come in contact with. Somewhere down the line, you just have to stop. Okay, I quit. I've, I've told this time and time again that I understand the callings of God and they are without regret, remorse. But when you have the calling of God upon your life and everyone in this house has the calling of God upon your life. What is that calling? Follow me. Nothing else. Follow me. And what does follow me mean? Do what I do. Act like I act. Speak like I speak. Say the words I would say. If you're saying something or doing something out here and you stop and the Spirit of God speaks into your life, Christ would not do that. You need to cease and desist immediately and turn to God and ask him to forgive you through the blood of Jesus Christ. That's how imperative that is. That's how powerful that is. And when you do so, you'll see things start changing in your life. There's one thing about it. When, you, when you're serving God and when you're doing the things for God, Things really get exciting. Amen. I have people, oh, they, they look down. You, you take right now in the world in which we're living, they're doing everything. Now, let me, let me qualify this. They're doing everything to silence the mouth of God. Amen? They're doing it right here in this country in the next few years. It's going to be amazing if you can live here and walk into this house and worship God in spirit and in truth. But let me tell you. You mean to tell you what, when this all started? In the garden. Huh. There's no new thing on the earth. It's always as it has been. So quit complaining and start living for Christ. Quit listening what the world has to say and start telling somebody about Jesus. You need to tell your family. You need to tell your loved ones. You need to tell your neighbors or your work people or whatever have you. You need to be letting the world know that Jesus is coming and he is coming soon and he's coming after those that have made themselves ready. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. But Jesus said, follow me. And he went into the boat and his disciples followed him. And behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea, insomuch that the ship was covered by the, with the waves, but he was asleep. I want us to look at that for just a minute. <laughs> I'm sure that when they entered into that ship, there were those men such as Peter and his brethren and some of the others that were fishermen. And some of these guys were tax collectors and 
people that had jobs in the city or whatever have you that had never been on the ocean or the sea. They were not familiar with it. I imagine what they were talking, well, how's this going to be? We're going to go to the other side. I ain't never been on boat. I mean, the first time I flew in a plane, I had the seatbelt on. I was holding on to the armrest. I was fighting with the person next to me. Give me this thing. I got to hold on. I was holding on for dear life. I had my feet all pressed out. I was, I was ready to drop my head. I was ready to do everything. And then I got to thinking about it. This thing's going to be flying over 30,000 feet high. And if it just cuts loose and turns to come down, I got just so much time to get right with God. And that's it. All this seat belt and all that. Take your pillar and put it in. No, that ain't going to do a thing. That's, some people just lie to you. Amen. You better be right with God. Because you're fixing to meet Jesus. But when Jesus was there. And he went into that ship. The Bible said he went to the back of the ship. Now understand, when we're talking about ships, we're not talking about the Queen Mary here. We're talking uh, maybe a dinghy plus. They always told me that any, anything over 26 feet was a ship. This was not a ship. They called it a ship. And back in that day and in that area, that was a big old boat. Probably anywhere from 10 to 20 feet. That's not a big boat. And the Bible said Jesus went back there and laid down, went to sleep. And the disciples were sitting there and they were all talking among themselves. You ever been out on the water? Yeah, whoo, this thing can turn bad in a hurry. I need friends like this. Come on. Yeah, this thing going to get bad in a hurry. I'm looking over there and I'm seeing that cloud. Oh, this thing ain't looking good. We really don't need to be out here. I wish we were back over there. You ever heard that? We need to go back to Egypt. It better there. At least we had something to eat. Might have been onions and garlic. But at least I had something. No, sir. You need to stop all that. Get your eyes on the light that's ahead. And his name is Jesus. And just hold on to that. And don't worry about the rest of it. That'll all work itself out. Jesus is in the back of the boat. He's asleep. We're over here fretting and worrying. And you may tell you what, they were to storm up. Amen. And the Bible said that storm was so bad, that tempest, that it was just washing over the bow of the boat. I don't know how many cups they had or buckets or hands or whatever, but everybody I'm sure was bailing with everything they had trying to keep that pool thing afloat. And the Bible said, And the disciples came unto him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us, we perish. And in another Verses there, it said, don't you care that we perish? We're about to die. And Jesus said, O oh, ye of little faith, why are you feel fearful? Why are you fearful, you of little faith? What is it? Jesus said, follow me. Follow him is to be like him. I love that part in Acts where the Bible says the people of Antioch, they were first called Christians there. And Christian means Christ-like. Amen. If I want my life to be anything, I want it to be Christ-like. And what was the Christ-likeness? If they had gone on that ship like Jesus did, they'd have found them a corner, laid down, went to sleep. Why? 
because he had said. It wasn't the fact that they had a, a charter or they had a, a, a set route or whatever that they were going to do. The Bible said that he said, let us go unto the other side. I don't need to hear anybody else's comments. I don't need to hear about how bad that storm is, how big those boats are lightning, how fearful that thunder. I don't care how bad it's raining. Let the waves wash over. I'm going to the other side. Why? Because the one that is asleep in the back, praise God, I'm going to get me a pillow. Amen. I'm not going to be fearful. I'm not going to be afraid. I'm not going to let this thing shake me. And Jesus got up. He rebuked the sea and the winds. And there was a great calm. But the men all marveled. You know? And I'm going to get to this part in just a minute. And the men all marveled. And, so much, and the men marveled, saying, What manner of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him? Now, you have to understand, when Jesus spoke to them, what happened? He spoke to his disciples, but he rebuked the enemy. This was a learning process. You're out here, and the problem is you've been listening to how big the waves are. You've been listening to how bad this thing can get in a hurry. This is a learning process. And they all stood back and marveled at what had happened. And when the Bible said, and the men marveled, saying, What manner of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him? And the Bible says in the next part of the verse, And when he was come to the other side. Amen. We're going to the other side. Now, you fret, cry, do whatever you want to, but we're going over to the other side, no matter what happens. And when I was reading this, I thought about Paul, and I've used this so many times in the 27th chapter where Paul was on that ship, and he was in chains, or he was being hauled over to uh, uh, Rome and in that he was sitting there minding his own business everything was rolling along good but the Bible said there came up an evil wind and that wind was blowing and driving that ship and there was 130 some odd people on this ship but this ship didn't stand a chance. When that storm came up, it was death. And they knew it. And the Bible said that they didn't see any the sun or the stars. They were about 14 days out there fighting that tempest, that wind. You ever had a trial in your life that it just seems like it won't let up? I don't know what it may be. It may be a, somebody, your neighbor over there kicks your dog every time you let it out in the yard. I don't know what it is. You may have a sickness. You may have a problem. You may have a, a wife. I, mean, I don't know what your problem is. <laughs> and I thank God for mine, don't you? <laughs> it could be anything. Anything that comes along in your life can be that tempest that is trying to destroy you. Understand the devil is behind that evil wind. And if he can, he will destroy you. But he can't. Not unless you let him. The Bible said you resist him. Praise God. My grandmother used to say, you just go ahead and go it pains. I'm not taking anything for you. Go ahead, shoot your best shot. Do whatever you will, but I'm not going to take anything. Me, I'm looking for the aspirin bottle.
But you, you can't allow the enemy of your soul to cause you to fear. And their fear was that there were going to be wrecked. Now, listen to what happened. Fourteen days. Donna, good to see you. Fourteen days. They had been out there fighting this tempest. They had not seen a star. They had not seen the sun or the moon or anything else. They were in darkness. You ever been there? Oh, I have. I, I, Y'all just listen to me. I have. I'll explain it to you. You were in darkness not knowing what was going to happen the next minute. They knew they were out there and what the ships back in those days, they didn't have compasses and all this uh, GPS and all that. So they had to stay close to the shoreline wherever they went because if they had a problem, they'd dart into a port. Well, they didn't dart. They just rode it out. Some people are like that. They don't look for the harbor, and his name is Jesus. They'd rather ride it out. I can handle it. And the Bible said that they were looking at the storm. They were looking at what was happening around them. Now, remember, most of these people didn't know God. They didn't know anything about Christ. But there was one on board that did, and his name was Paul. And the Bible said he came up out of the belly of that ship and spoke to them words that as long as we abide in this ship, we're not anybody going to be lost. Now, there was some conniving and some sneaking around and carrying on. Uh, and they went out, and the Bible said that some of them went out and uh, tried to deceive everybody else and make it like they're putting anchors out and they were putting a boat over. Now, I'm on a ship that will handle 130 some odd people, 136 I think it is. And I'm on a lower in a, in a storm that I know that's just going to just overwhelm this ship. And now we're talking about a pretty good sized ship. And I'm going to pop myself over the side and get in a dinghy and feel like I am better. Sometimes we just don't think. Sometimes we get to a, a point to where we're grabbing at straws instead of looking for the hand of Jesus. Amen. And the Bible says that they went over there and they... They were going to lower that ship down and they were doing it under color, under, under disguise as though they would have cast anchors out on the front of the boat. We're, we're up here putting anchors out. Yeah, they let that boat down. <laughs> Forget the ship, we're going in the boat. Paul went to the centurion. Unless they abide in the ship, none of us are going to make it. But if we all abide in the ship, we'll make it. Let me tell you, when I sing that old song, sometimes my anchor holds, and I think about the ship that is tossed to and fro, and I think about if I can just abide in this ship, I don't care how bad it gets, I don't care how bad the waves are, how big everything is, Mia, close that, slow that clock down a little bit. I don't care how bad it gets if I'll just stay with the ship. That old ship of Zion. If I'll just hold on to him for just a little longer, I will come through this. It may cost me my life, but if I'm still holding on to the hand of Jesus, I won't worry about it. I don't worry about it. Danny Rambo said, why, the, why, why worry about all these kind of things when you don't have to worry because the next, time, next hand you shake may be the hand of Jesus. The next step you take may be on the street of gold. Why are you going to worry? 
Hold on to God and don't fret because this old ship is tossed to and fro and there are going to be problems on top of problems and they're not going to get any better. They're not going to get any help out there. It doesn't seem like you turn around to your a brother or sister and you say, I, I need, and they go, Because they can't hear you. Why? Because they got problems of their own. Everybody does. But the one thing about it, Paul said to the centurion and to the soldiers, except these abide in the ship, you cannot be saved. And what happened? The soldiers went and cut off the rope of the boat and just let it fall. I don't need a rescue boat. My rescuer is on board. Praise God. I'm not looking for an outside help. My help lives right inside of here. I may not get what I want. I may not get what I think I need. But I can tell you one thing. Whatever that God does in my life is for my betterment, for my benefit. And I'm going to glorify him. I'm going to praise him. I'm going to lift him up. Why? Because he is the savior of my soul. I don't have to worry about tomorrow. God has it all under control today. <laughs> praise God. Amen. Except these abide with the ship, you cannot be saved. And the Bible said that the soldiers cut the ropes and let that old dinghy fall to the wayside. And there were 200, three score, about 200, I'm sorry, 266 and 1676, 276 souls on that boat. That was a big boat. And when it was day, and Paul had spoke to them and said, take and eat. You've been fighting this demon. You've been fighting this for 14 days. It's time to stop. It's time to get a hold of a different direction. What you're doing is not working. You're trying to get this thing all handled by yourself. It's not working. Paul said, now get over here. Take some meat. Get a little drink. You've been 14 days in the darkness. Amen. I've been there. I've been in that place. I can't tell you what you've done. I can tell you about me. I've been in that darkness. I've been there when it didn't look like the sun was going to ever shine again. But I thank God that as I held on just a little bit longer, he came by my way. Praise the Lord. And when he came by my way, there was a joy that was unspeakable and full of glory. Why? Because I knew my God had it all under control. I didn't have to worry about another thing. I could put it all on him. He had taken care of it. And I turned my back on that evil. And I walked out. Let God handle it. I don't know how. But I'm going to let God handle it from now on. And he did. Praise God. Amen. Amen. The Bible said that and they were all in the ship, 203 score and 16 souls. And when they had eaten enough, they lightened the ship and cast all the wheat off. Yeah, amen. And when it was day, amen. You in the darkness, behind every cloud there's a silver lining. You in the darkness today, just hang on a while. That sun's going to shine again. How many have ever been, I don't mean like in Waycross, and there was a hurricane come by and you had a little rain. How many have ever been in a hurricane? Amen. Amen. I'm talking about a hurricane. I've been in them with 130, 150 mile an hour wind gust. Everybody, I'm going to just run out there and play in that. No, you won't either. <laughs> You'll be battening down the hatches and hoping and praying 
Amen? Because it's a terrible situation. And when you look out there and that sky's dark, you don't think it's going to ever shine again. You think everything is just going to fold up and nothing good can come out of all of this. But let me tell you something. God has the control. And whatever that power that is coming against you, Christ has it under control. There are certain things the devil can do and then uh -uh, can't do that. Amen. You can put your trust and confidence in Christ and not have to worry about what the devil has to say. You don't have to worry about what he can do. He'll lie to you like a yellow hound dog. And if you're willing to listen, he'll lie a little more. But we don't have to listen to him. Paul said, and when they were in the ship, and when they had eaten enough, they lightened the ship, cast out all the wheat into the sea. Everything that's of, of value here, it's gone. There's nothing left. We're just in the boat. Praise God for the boat. And I thank God that that anchor, which is Jesus Christ, holds. And when it was day, they knew not the land, but they discovered a certain creek with a shore, unto which they were minded, if it were possible, to thrust in the ship into there. And listen to this. And when they had taken up the anchor, they committed themselves unto the sea and loosened the rudder bands and hoisted up the mainsail to the wind and made towards shore. Who else did you hear done that? He built an ark one day. And the Bible said the one thing that was missing on that was there was no rudder. Amen. It was the hand of God that was directing and guiding. Here they had no opportunities. They had nothing they could do. They had tried everything for 14 days, and it was a miserable failure. Finally, 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 they got a hold of the man of God, and the man of God said, just turn it loose. Let God have it. Put the mainsail up. Turn it to the wind. Let's go. Praise God. God is going to take care of whatever it is we have need of. I value the things of God. I value, and if, if I want to read one scripture here. I know that times, right now, woo I want to read Hebrews, the third chapter, the sixth verse, and listen to what it says. But Christ, as a son over his own house, whose house are we? Praise God. If we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of, listen to this, of the hope firm unto the end. Praise God. It's not what you did yesterday. It's not what you're planning on doing for next week. Are you still holding firm the hope that Christ has set before you? Are you still holding on to his unchanging hand that's where it's at that's what's happening you can look around you the storms of life are everywhere there's no new thing on the earth everything is as it always has been there's going to be problems and troubles the devil is still trying to do away with God he's going to set his throne above the throne of God but he's already been cast out and down and doomed all we have to do Hold on to the unchanging hand. The unchanging hand. In Romans, and I will do closing. In Romans, the 8th chapter, beginning with the, we, we start with the 31st verse. I won't read them all. What shall we then say to those things? If God be for us, who can be against us? I mean, that's, that's as simple as it gets. Because he didn't spare his own son, but delivered him up for us. 
We have a hope because God has provided the hope. As he did with Abraham to offer that son. But that son was not going to be sufficient. God provided one over there in the brushes. God provided. And that sacrifice was complete. And when that sacrifice was made, it accomplished what it was that God had set out. It ended the conversation because God had provided. And I want to read down for just a, a second or two. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. I have people all the time. I had one. I did, I'd forgotten about it. Herschel mentioned it the other day, this lady over there, and I was I was just being just trying to be helpful. And she turned around and jumped at me. I'm over there doing guard duty because I know Gina's out there. <laughs> and uh, she jumped at me and what what did she say? I thought you were a preacher. Out of my mouth. I don't even know you. Why are you, why are you speaking those things to me? I don't even know you. But what, who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Amen? Who is he that condemneth? It is it is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again. Thank God we're not serving a dead Mohammed or Confucius or, or some of these others out there that are dead. They got their tombs, and they're in there, and they're going to stay in there until the resurrection. When after that they come out, they're not going to come out at a good time. But I'm serving a risen Savior. And who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Thank God. I don't even know. When I pray, I don't even know what I need to pray for, Brother Danny. I, I, I sit there and sometimes, you ever been in there? You don't know what to pray for. So you just stop and you listen to what the Spirit saith. Praise God. Because he will make intercession for you. I don't know what I need. I don't know what the day holds for today or tomorrow or next month or next year. I don't know. And let me clue you in on something. When I am living in Jesus Christ, I don't worry about it. Let the storm come. Let the tempest fly, flare up. I don't worry about it. For he sits at the right hand of God and maketh intercession for us. And I love this. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution, famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. That's the way the world looks at you. They look at you like you're weak. <laughs> See, like, David, you come against me with sword, shield, spear, but I come against you in the name of the Lord of hosts. Praise God. I don't need all that other garb. I done, I done left all that back yonder in the camp because it didn't fit right. All I need is what God has always given me, and you're already dead. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. No, God is delivering you into my hand. That's the way it worked. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Praise God. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, 
nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Who? The boy in Mad Magazine, what was his name, Alfred or something? <laughs> Who, me worry? No. I don't have a thing to worry about. Why? Because my Redeemer liveth. Praise God. And he's making intercession for me. He's on my side. And if God be for me, who can be against me? Not heaven, earth, powers, nothing else can harm me or turn me. This day and hour that we're living, and you're watching that one-eyed devil, and they're sitting there lying to you like yellow hound dogs. Understand this. They're not telling you the truth. You haven't heard the truth in years. They're lying to you like yellow hound dogs. Whenever they say it's over here on the right, run to the left. Whatever it is, don't believe a word they're saying because they don't know the truth. They have given themselves over to lies and they're going to be lost in their lies. But we have a God that cares about us. Whatever, let the storm come. Let everything come upon us. Just shake yourself like Samson. And just say, I'm going to stand in the name of the Lord. I'm not going to fall. I'm not going to falter. But my God is able. And what I have committed unto him, he will keep. He's not off the job. He's on the job. He hasn't gone to the backside of glory over yonder going to talk about grubbing worms with Brother Ernest and go fishing. No, sir. He's sitting at the right hand of the throne of the majesty on high. And he's making intercession every moment that comes about on your behalf. Whatever it is, whatever your need is, you don't have to worry. You don't have to fear. His grace is all sufficient. Let us pray. Father God, I thank you, Lord, for all that you have done. I thank you, God, that your spirit is there to keep us, to abide with us. And Lord, whatever the need is, Father, I ask you, O oh God, to reach down into the hearts of your people, giving them the confidence and the assurance Jesus lives. Praise God. He'll never leave me nor forsake me, but he'll be with me to the end. While the world is on fire, you will never leave. But Lord, we'll walk through the fire into the arms of a loving God. Father, we ask you now, O oh Lord, give us now of your grace and understanding. Give us of the blessing of your day. And Father, we thank you, oh dear Lord, and thank you for these wonderful saints that stayed for just a moment longer. And Lord, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.